Hello and welcome to Don't Kill My Lizard. Follow these simple steps and you won't kill my lizard. This is my lizard, Bebe. Okay, this is Bebe's enclosure. Bebe's a desert lizard. She likes it hot. Right now the temp is a balmy 110.7, but you know what? The lights just came on. It's going to get hotter than that in here. Located in the center there, to the right, Bebe's food dish. That's where we'll be placing her yummy nummies. To the left, water. This is kind of a contentious thing here with Euromastix owners, as uh, many Euromastix owners do not give their lizards water. But I figure, what the hell, we're giving her water. One of the best ways to not kill my lizard is to make sure the house doesn't burn down. These lights are brutally hot, and then we'll take the interior of the enclosure, at least in the basking spot, up to about 120 plus degrees. Should these lights touch the plastic molding here on the side of the enclosure, they might start a small fire, and we don't want to do that. So, let's keep the house from burning down, and we won't kill my lizard. To get into the enclosure, it's simple. Grab the side facing you, and slide her out. I like to slide it out just past the little plastic lip here. If you slide it past there, the light doesn't touch the plastic, it doesn't melt. Occasionally, we do get a little meltage, as you can see here. Once you've slid the lights out, you can get inside the enclosure. Right at the food, the water, cold side hide, warm side hide, where I believe Bebe is sitting right now. And of course, our lighting. Really hot. Remember, don't kill my lizard. When you're done inside the enclosure, just slide her all the way back until it connects right here with these little lip. There we go. Tucks right there. No big deal. Make sure the lights don't touch the plastic. They will slip. So you just kind of slide things around here. Make sure they don't touch. One of the best things we can do to not kill my lizard is to actually feed her. So, what I'm going to do is quickly show you what we feed our lizard. Bebe's a vegetarian, which means she eats yummy things like bok choy and dull spring mix. In addition to bok choy and spring mix, we've got some supplements here. Bebe loves her supplements. To the left, Iguana Dry Formula Juvenile Veggie Pellets. These are not pellets made from iguana, they're pellets made for iguana. Over here, tortoise dust. Nummy, nummy. Feeding baby anything else besides her spring mix, her bok choy, and her supplements is a really bad idea. <laughs> Alright, let's make a salad for baby. Okay, now we have the food dish. I clean out the food dish by just wiping it out with paper towel into the trash. Then I took a damp paper towel, wiped out the uh, inside of said food dish with paper towel, and now it's all clean. If the lizard poops in the food dish, uh, I'd use a little soap. If that doesn't work, maybe just a touch of bleach. And make sure you clean out the uh, food dish there so the lizard doesn't eat soap and bleach, okay? I could use the tripod, but f*** it, I'm lazy. Alright, spring mix. Use mostly green stuff from the spring mix. A little bit of that won't hurt, but mostly green. Take about a 50% mix of the spring, and we're going to use some bok choy on top of that. And of course, replace all the vegetables back in their handy dandy Ziploc bags. Got it? Okay, spring mix, bok choy. And we're going to rinse the vegetables. Okay, so we rinsed off the vegetables. Now we're going to take and rip up the vegetables into small bite-sized pieces for our lizard. See? Ripping up vegetables. Baby doesn't have teeth, but she does have strong jaws, so we don't need to make them really tiny. Just, you know, manageable for her. Okay. Put some of the vegetables here in our little quasi Stone Age food dish. Take some tortoise dust. Sprinkle a little bit of tortoise dust 
on top of veggies. Now, juvenile iguana dry formula, fruity pebbles. Sprinkle fruity pebbles in the bowl. The iguana, oh, the iguana. Bebe goes nuts over the fruity pebbles. She'll probably eat that over her greens. But because she's only going to be visited twice, or I'm sorry, because she's going to be visited every other day by you guys, she'll probably want more, she probably should get more pellets. More tortoise dust. Tortoise dust. By the way, these will be located in the Rubbermaid box near the front door, the top blue one. All you need to worry about is this and this. Okay, here are the Rubbermaid Lizard Supply cases. You only need to worry about the top one. The top one will have tortoise dust and juvenile iguana pellets. Lock the top open. Take our delicious, nutritious nummy mix. Put it right here in the center. That goes on top of the rock, which is on top of a piece of uh, tile. Okay, now we're gonna do water. Grab the water dish. Should be empty, maybe it's full of sand. All right, rinse out the water dish. Make sure all the sand and poop is out of it. And then put about half full of water in the water dish. Let's go back here. A clean environment is one of the best ways to ensure that you don't kill my lizard. As you can see, Bebe's enclosure is pretty darn clean right now. She hasn't pooped in it. Of course, she hasn't been out of her hide yet today, but that's normal. I've conveniently uh, placed pooper scooper by the enclosure here. There'll also be some of those nice Publix bags that you can use to place poop in. She may poop on the rocks. She may poop on the tile or in her food dish. We're just going to have to be smart about it and make sure those things are cleaned out. I usually grab a piece of paper towel like this. Let's do it anyway. We'll pretend there's some poop. Okay, paper towel. Grab the poop and the surrounding sand. Pull it out. Put it in the bag. Make sure when you slide the top back that the lights are not touching any plastic. Again, not burning down the house is a cool way to make sure that you don't kill my lizard. A few other things. Probably not the best idea to pull Bebe out of her enclosure. Though she doesn't mind being handled, she's a bit clumsy and if she falls to the floor, she could run away. If there's any problem, like you come in and you find her laying on her back and her tongue's hanging out, uh, probably a good idea to call the vet. Fortunately, I've got the business card for the lizard vet taped right up here on the side of Bebe's enclosure. If you need to take her to the vet, I've got a little blue uh, dog carrier that you can put her in. It's made for a chihuahua, but it does just fine for lizards, too. Cindy and I love Bebe very much, so don't kill our lizard.